For a long time now, the so-called experts have been saying that Tesla's 4680 cells are really not that good. It's true. I've read lots of times from many people. Intriguingly, in spite of their apparent lack of performance, according to many experts, BMW, General Motors, and now Subaru are planning to use Tesla's 4680-sized cylindrical cells in their future electric cars. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. I'm the Electric Viking. If you're enjoying the channel, that's awesome. And I'd love your support if that's possible. I'll put a link in the description below to our Patreon page and also to our YouTube members page. Subaru apparently are looking at now using Panasonic's next-gen cylindrical EV batteries. Of course, the larger size 4680 cell. Now, is it Panasonic's? Well, I mean, obviously, um, Panasonic are going to make them. But I wouldn't say they're Panasonic cells. I'd say that really Tesla are the ones who have pioneered this new size. The 4680 cell, it's simply a reference to the size of the cell. So as you can see, the 4680 cell is significantly bigger than Tesla's current 2170 cells that it uses still in a lot of its cars. Does that mean 2170s are inferior to 4680s? Well, not necessarily. 2170s do work really well, but theoretically 4680s should be able to perform better. Subaru and Panasonic Energy have announced that they have started talks to build a medium to long-term partnership to meet demand for battery electric vehicles and for automotive batteries. According to a press release, the two partners have talked about using Panasonic's next generation lithium batteries that it's gonna be primarily selling to Tesla, but also now to other car manufacturers as well. Subaru are interested in using these cylindrical cells in their electric cars. Now, of course, BMW and General Motors apparently are you planning on using similar sized 4680 batteries in their future EVs also. The batteries will be used for Subaru at the upcoming dedicated electric vehicle plant, which they're constructing in Japan. Here's what Subaru said. Subaru and Panasonic Energy will hold discussions with a view to Panasonic Energy supplying Subaru with next-gen automotive cylindrical lithium-ion batteries and Subaru installing batteries purchased from Panasonic Energy and EVs to be produced from the latter half of the 2020s at its sites, including a dedicated EV plant scheduled to be constructed in Japan. We know as well Panasonic say that the version of these batteries they'll be producing by 2025 will have a 5 to 10% improvement in energy density by using silicon in the battery. They have a new version of a special kind of silicon that apparently prevents some of the problems that silic using silicon can create. Now, using silicon in a battery, though, could potentially create twice the energy density. That's what, they're cap what it's capable of. Whether or not they can reach that in the real world, I don't know. However, these new batteries from Panasonic by 2030 should have around 25% improvement in energy density. Today's energy density, well, by the time they make them, I would say it'd be about 300 watts per kilo. A 25% improvement would mean these batteries could potentially have up to 400 watts per kilo, which would be very impressive. In this press release, Subaru and Panasonic haven't specifically defined the fact that they're going to be using 4680 cells, but I think it's pretty clear that we can infer that that's what they are talking about. However, it's also important to note that these three automakers also will be joined by EV laggard Mazda. Mazda have just stopped selling the MX-30 EV in the United States because it's not selling anywhere. They've sold 66 for the first six months of the year, as in what, 10 per month. They're barely selling, same in Australia, same in most countries. It doesn't sell because it has 100 miles of range on the EPA cycle. That's 160 kilometers, guys. And it's not exactly cheap. So the MX-30 is basically an abysmal failure of an EV in terms of its sales production. There's no way they'll ever recoup their cost. But Mazda is saying, well, we know we need to make EVs. Yes, we're going to make some. Uh, not many, but we'll make some. And we want to use Panasonic's cylindrical 4680 cells as well. So they announced that actually in June. That means that now uh, Tesla's 4680 cells, which apparently are not very good, are going to be used by four automakers in the future. Not today. They've made the decision very recently, all of them within the last six months. Six months. Four automakers within six months have said, well, you keyboard experts, we don't, we don't agree. We think 4680 cells are actually a very good choice. Now, I'm not an expert. I'm not an engineer. I'm just presenting you the information for you to make up your mind and to decide 
how to actually make sense of what's really going on here. But I am very curious to know what you guys think of this. If cylindrical cells are such an abysmal failure and Tesla's use of them is such a, a joke within the industry, according to the keyboard warriors and the so-called engineering experts on, on the internet, why is it that these OEMs are all saying, well, we're going to move from prismatic cells to cylindrical cells? I'm curious. Really, I really actually want to know this. And I, I've researched a lot on this and I can't yet find a, a real good answer for this. However, as you know, guys, I actually do think that prismatic cells in the form of lithium ion phosphate cells doped with manganese are really going to be the primarily source of batteries in the future. LFP cells already represent about 60% of the global market. I think that will probably increase. Probably by 2030, I'd say we'd be looking at about 25% of the market being cylindrical cells. Some people might think that Panasonic is trying to build a coalition of Japanese car makers to introduce its new 4680 cells, says Inside EVs on a bigger scale in Japan. And it's possible the Japanese government has played a role in this with Panasonic. Mazda and Subaru though are not big manufacturers. So Panasonic potentially is trying to secure extra orders from smaller brands before building their large battery plant that is primarily designed to support Tesla. And it's necessary to achieve scale as well. The more customers you have, the better off you are as a company. So I think this is really a good move from Panasonic. Now, the only thing is here, Tesla can't use these batteries being produced by Panasonic in Japan. So the factory that Panasonic will use in Japan to supply Mazda and Subaru won't be supplying Tesla. Tesla will only get cylindrical 4680 cells from Panasonic that are made in the United States. And that's because of the Inflation Reduction Act. With that act, it requires batteries to be produced in the US Therefore, this factory, it needs to find customers in. And it's found some, obviously, it's found Mazda and Subaru. It's also apparently got some other customers that they haven't revealed who they are just yet. So what do you guys think? In this whole battle between cylindrical and prismatic cells, LFP and NCM chemistry, I find it very interesting. And I, I don't think that the 4680 cells are as much of a failure as what critics are saying. It's also worth considering that 4680 cells going into the Cybertruck are said to have 10% higher energy density than existing 4680 cells. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.